So the end of the year is upon us and there are a few techniques that I want to share with you too that I used way too much this year also in hardware and two that I would like to explore more in the future. And um, all of the techniques we will have a look at today are available in my document of patching techniques and ideas with patch diagrams and I continue updating this um and document links in the description of course if you are interested so the first technique is splitting a sequence with a comparator if you watch this uh, if you watch my uh, channel if you follow my channel you know that i use this uh, a lot <laughs> i would say even a bit too much um, but I really enjoy this technique and basically what you do is you use a comparator to split a sequence to split a pitch sequence between two voices right so here I have the sec 3 you can see the sequence here on the scope right and if I send this also to a comparator if I send this um, this uh, pitch sequence also to a comparator basically the comparator will compare the pitch sequence within this case static voltage so now it's for example at zero volts so we get a gate whenever the sequence goes above zero volts that will stay open also as long as it's above zero volts and we have a gate that will stay on or stay open as long as it's below and i can change this offset i can change the static voltage for example a bit up and then we have two sets of gates Right, and basically we split this sequence into two sets of gates that we can use then to gate different um, voices. Here I have an example, right, I have here the ADDR sequencer sequencing the VCO. Right, it will sound like this. And I have the same sequence sequencing energy going through tap dancer. Right, so the sequence, the pitch sequence itself is going to both oscillators and now I'm going to use an envelope or two envelopes to uh, bring in these voices, right, in the case of the VCO, I have also a VCA, right, to bring in these voices with the comparator. So I'm going to send the pitch sequence to the comparator as well. And now here it's set to about uh, 0 0.6 volts, right, so everything below 0 0.6 volts will gate one envelope that will open the VCA for the VCO and everything um, below will open another envelope that will open energy right I can also change them maybe I can do the opposite Right? So now I split this sequence, the sequence from the ADDR, using a comparator, I split it into two different voices. I have here another example with the 8 sec from JW. Right, it's sequencing both Opolus and Kick All. And again, I'm using a comparator to split this sequence and gate the different voices. Right, so this will be just Opolus. this will be kick hole. right so everything together will sound like this again adding layers adding movement adding variation to your patches to your sounds Another technique I really enjoy this year is glitching with the delay, specifically with the Corona Blob 2 from All Right Devices, which is also available in hardware, by the way. But this will work also with other delays. Um, I have in hardware the Mimeophone, for example. It works also with the Mimeophone and other modules that you can explore. Right, so basically the idea here is to freeze the delay and bring in the wet and changing or modulating the delay times to create this glitching sound. So here I have basically the FM operator. Right, and I have here a manual gate module. You can do this with a sequencer. Uh, I like to do this randomly with something like chances. You will see this in a second. Right, so first of all, this gate will freeze the delay or will loop the delay. And at the same time, it will also open the wet amount. Right, so the delay usually will be all the way dry. 
And when the gate is high, when the delay is frozen, when it's looping, also the wet will be. Right, the wet will be up. So it will bring in this effect, which will be usually off, but only when the delay is frozen. Frozen, it will be on. Of course, you can explore this also with other settings. And at the same time, this gate will also trigger some sort of random voltage. In this case, it's sample and hold. That will modulate the delay times, right? And then we get something like this. Right, with every gate, we get different Right, we get different glitches and I have here again an example right here I have just a sequence just to so we have something playing here and um, the sequencer from Vox glitch this is the digital sequencer sequencing and uh, Neoni going through uh, the filter also from his true try or tray right with some chorus sound like this Right, and now I have here noise. So I really like doing this with noise and with drums. We'll see this also in a second. I have white noise going through a modulated bandpass filter. Right, um, really with a really short envelope. And this is going to chrono block too. And again, in this case, I'm using, I like using chances, also count modular, which is a Bernoulli gate. So it will take a gate or a clock or triggers and will add probability to them. So you get something a bit more random. Right, and this gate, again, will freeze the delay, will open the wet amount, and will trigger sample and hold in this case, all at the same time. Right, so we get those glitches, it will sound like this. Right. So this works great with noise. And... This will work great also with drums. So I have here, <laughs> I have here the gate sequencer sequencing Tremor 2 and Tremor, trem, tremor 1, sorry, Tremor 1 as a kick, hi-hat and snare. They are being mixed into Corner Block 2 with the same setup. Right, if I take out the glitches to sound like this. Right, but when I bring them back in, have a listen to this. Okay, so now two techniques that I would like to explore more in the near future. The first one is sending envelopes through filters, so-called resonant envelopes. There is a great video by Chris Meyer, Learning Modular, about this. And this gives really interesting results. You turn your envelope into something a bit more wobbly and with more movement. And yes, you send envelopes through filters and different filters will give you different results. Right, so here on the scope you can see the blue trace will be our original envelope, the green trace will be the envelope after the filter. Right, for now they look more or less the same, although the one after the filter is a bit more slewed, of course, because a filter is also can also be used as a slew limiter. Right, but watch what happens when I start taking the cutoff down. Look at this, right, and adding resonance. Look at what happens, right? You see this wobbly shape here. I can add some drive maybe. Right, look at the envelope, how it looks like. Right, and this can give you really interesting modulation sources um, for all sorts of things, right? So here I have a patch or a couple of examples. I have the 16 step sequencer sequencing the VCO, right? And I have this envelope, an envelope going through a filter, again, a Lopez filter in this case, and it's opening a wave folder. You can see the envelope here on the scope, right? And the amount of resonance will set the decay of these wobbles. 
right and the cut off will change their frequency so I have here some modulation on the cut off another example I have here a sample and hold um, sequencing energy right and again an envelope in this case it's going through a different filter and you can see the result here on the scope this one is from Bidu or Bido right and it will sound like this right if I solo it maybe for a second right so again instead of just having normal so-called normal uh, ADSR envelopes you get this wobbly interesting thing so this is really something I would like to use more in my patches also in hardware this works great also in hardware Another technique I would really like to explore is ducking pitch, side chaining pitch information, creating glissando and irregular rhythms. And yes, you don't have just to side chain audio in modular, you can also side chain and duck pitch information, duck control voltage. Right, so here I have a sequence coming from the SEC3. You can see I'm sending it first through a VCA before the quantizer, right, so I can duck it. Right, I can control its amplitude, I can side chain it to something else, and I'm going to use an inverted envelope to do this. Right, so the envelope I have here is coming from the ADSR, this will be the blue the green trace on the scope. Right, but what I want it, I want it to start for maximum, right? So the VCA will stay open and then it will go down and come up again when I duck it. So the VCA will go down and then up again. Right, so first of all, we need to invert the envelope so it will go down instead of up. I'm using in this case the CV mix module that can do everything for me uh, in this case, but you can use other methods to invert and offset envelopes. Right, so first of all, I'm going to invert it. Right, you see now it goes down instead of up. And now I'm going to offset it. I'm going to push it so it will start from the maximum, right, just with the second knob here. Right, and now you can see it starts at maximum and it goes down and this envelope will basically duck our pitch, right? Maybe I will use a triangle wave. Right, just like this and of course you can control by how much. Right, and create all sorts of interesting effects. I have here a few examples of course. This is something I would really like to use more also in hardware, also in my music. Right, um, so there is the 16 step sequencer from Count Modular sequencing energy and I have the inverted envelope with the same setup more or less. Right, being gated by the sequencer and side chaining or actually it's uh, um, ducking the level of the pitch information. Right, and I can make this a bit more. Right, and again, the times, the attack and, and release or decay. Right, we really change the result. Every another example, this is with the FM operator. ADDR sequencer, again, ducking the pitch information. In this case, with another sequencer, right, that was gating the envelope. Right? Man, this can be really interesting. Right, you can create all sorts of interesting rhythms and all sorts of glitches or glissando and stuff like this. So also this technique I would love to explore more. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.